I'm really excited about this video because this video is going to change someone's life. Someone watching, and it could be you, is going to realize that the way you see the world is very special and unique. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell. I am a Canadian, a watercolor artist, and a synthesis. And that's what this video is all about, synesthesia. If you've never heard that word before, in a nutshell, it means that your sensory pathways are a little bit mixed and you experience one sense through another, like tasting uh, in color or hearing in color. Um, and I wanna tell you a little bit about my experience as a synesthete. And the first thing I wanna talk about is how I realized this, because it's not one of those things that you that is talked about, so you may not realize, especially if you're a young person watching this. And when I realized I was in grade 11, my teacher came into homeroom and instead of starting the lesson, he talked about a documentary that he had seen on TV the night before. And he was totally incredulous. He was like, this guy in this documentary said that all his numbers and letters were in color. So like if he looks at a newspaper, it's colored. And I thought everyone was gonna be like, um, yeah, that's how the world works. But everyone was like, oh, that's so crazy. And I put up my hand and was like, wait, wait, you, you guys don't see all your letters in color? And it was just a total, it totally kind of shifted how I perceive my world and realizing that everybody else doesn't perceive the world the exact same as me. It was such a fun experience and it kind of spread through the school and everyone was asking me questions about it and uh, another girl realized that she was also a th synesthete and uh, experiencing synesthesia. So all that is to say that ever since I can remember, the entire alphabet and all numbers they each have a unique color so when i read a book each letter is in color and those letters kind of inform the color of the word and those colors never change they're always the same so i thought for today's video i wanted to talk to you about my experience as um, someone with synesthesia i can't believe i haven't mentioned it on the channel up until now and I can't wait to hear in the comments from those of you that are um, synesthetes what your life experience has been like or ways that you might have used this, um, what I think is a gift. Uh, or if someone's just realizing, definitely comment below because that's so cool. And we all wanna hear what's going through your head. <laughs> all right, let's get to a little painting project. Come on in, come over here to my dining room and we'll set up a little area for painting. Where do you like to paint? Comment and let me know. Do you have a special spot? Do you just sit at the counter or the table or do you have like a little studio space? I have a studio up in the attic of our home, but I still love to paint downstairs. There's just something about sitting like in the center of your home, especially when it's quiet and there's no babies crying or running around. Anyways, here are today's supplies. We're gonna paint a floral letter because that's just so perfect. I'm using Canson 140 pound cold press paper on a little block. Um, I'm using a little Derwent set of watercolor pans. These are the um, ink tents, they're really nice. I have clean water, paper towel for blotting my brush, and then I have a number four round brush, and that is from Princeton. All of these supplies are linked in the video description below so you can shop them. And then what you're going to do to begin our project is print a letter just on computer paper, any size you want, and we're gonna cover the back of that letter in graphite, so just cover it in pencil. If you want, if you have some washi tape or even some scotch tape, you can, um, you know, tape your letter in place in order to transfer it. That's just going to make sure that you, you know, get it in the center, put it exactly where you want, tape it down. Now you don't have to worry about it. And we're going to use a sharp instrument like a mechanical pencil, and we're just going to trace over the letter and that'll transfer it really easily. If you don't have a printer, what I recommend doing is drawing the letter yourself on graph paper. So just look at a picture of a serif letter or a block letter and use the graph paper to help you draw um, a letter that's really symmetrical. 
All right, I have traced over my letter A. You lift it up, you should see a nice faint outline. And of course that's just pencil, so you can erase that if you need to erase any part of it or if any part transfer too dark. And all we're gonna do is fill it with flowers. So it's a really chill meditative project that doesn't require a whole lot of planning. You can plan out a little color palette. I'm using kind of pastel, pinks, purples, peaches, doing something that's a little Little bit spring inspired maybe which is so perfect because it's so dark it has been raining here for two weeks you could see you know just from this video how dark and gloomy our our house is looking it's a perfect day for lighting a candle having a cup of tea and doing a little bit of painting this is a really good project for practicing your perfectly imperfect floral shapes, all those weird and wonky petals. You know, just put down a stroke of peach or pink and leave it alone and call it a petal. The nice thing about a project like this is that all of these little bits come together to create something larger, the letter A. So none of the little bits really need to be so perfect or so precise. This project is a chance to relax and practice your brush strokes as we fill in this entire letter and we could chat a little bit more about synesthesia. If you're a little bit curious about sort of what it's actually like, what my actual experience is. So I see all of my letters and numbers in color. Um, the alphabet is totally colorful and it's always the same. So A is yellow, B is red, C is blue, uh, D is dark green, E is light green, F is light blue, uh, G is light red, H is red, I is white, J is light red, K is light blue, L is purple, purple, M is light orange, like a peach, N is orange, O is very, very pale orange, um, and so on. <laughs> and uh, so a word like Shada would be pink, red, yellow, purple, green, yellow. A word like hello would be red, light green, purple, purple, light orange. <laughs> So words, you know, they have the colors of the letters, but sometimes the word will be sort of colored by the, the main letters in that word. And I've heard this is quite common. So a word like lion is um, purple, white, orange, orange, light orange, dark orange. So it becomes like a very warm word. That's actually colored by the letters at the end of the word. But it's certainly more common for a word to be colored by the letters at the start. Yeah, it's um, kind of wild. It, it's hard to describe exactly how I see the colors. I, I suppose it's just very much in my mind's eye. For example, if a, there was a big sign with red words on it, you know, I know that the word is red, but I still see that that letter has an inherent color, like an aura of a letter or something. <laughs> Um, and it makes memorization so easy. I did a lot of acting as a kid and I would always be really good at memorizing my lines. I've still got all my friends' um, phone numbers from high school memorized. Of course, I don't think I'm alone in that <laughs> if you're of a certain generation. An article from the American Psychological Association says the phenomenon derives its name from Greek, meaning to perceive together. So it's really a crossing of senses. Many people will hear in color. That's the most common. Some people taste in color or even see shapes that are associated with tastes. I see my letters and my numbers in color. And then because letters are associated with um, musical notes, my musical notes kind of have a color as well. And we still don't know a whole lot about this extraordinary sensory perception. We know that it is biological and it can be passed down and it's more common in women than men and it seems to have some tie to creativity, uh, which I think is, is so cool and kind of just makes sense to me. Some famous folks that have identified themselves as synesthetes are Pharrell Williams, Billie Eilish, Marilyn Monroe, Billy Joel, Tori Amos, and Richard Feynman, and many, many more. I was going through the Wikipedia page and most everyone 
is creative in some way, acting or artists, musicians, lots and lots of musicians, people that hear and experience musical notes in color, which I think is so cool. We filled in the entire letter at this point and it does look a little washed out, a little dull. So I mixed up a darker pink and we can mix a darker purple. Remember, simply um, mixing less water into your colors will darken them. Or if you need a, you know, a darker purple, you could mix a little blue into it or a little black, but simply less water is usually the way to go. And we're using just the very fine, precise point of that round brush to do some like little kind of sketchy outlines on some of these flowers. Some of the roses, we can put some dotting at the center and some little broken spiral lines or little curving lines. And that really gives the look of a rosebud. You can put a few dark lines or sketchy outlines on these four petal flowers, the really simple sort of open poppy type flowers that we've painted. And then for those kind of little circular flowers that are made up of all the little dots, I just mix a darker purple or blue and I place a few more dots just to give them a bit of a contrast. Don't go over them in their entirety. You want a mix of the dark and the light so that they really pop. For the leaves, a few small little lines will go a long way and that's really all you need to do to add a beautiful sort of contrast to this letter and make it just jump off the page. If you're enjoying this watercolor video, then you are going to love my watercolor e-course. I have a new one, it's called Flower Power, and it is a beyond beginner, I'm calling it. Not color mixing and paper types. This is for those of you that know that and wanna go beyond and develop your own unique style and paint watercolor flowers with confidence. If you are new to watercolor and you're thinking, but I need that beginner stuff, don't worry, I got a beginner course everything you need to know to start painting. And if you need both, you can bundle them to save big time. Head to my website to check it out. That's shadacampbell.com and check out these watercolor e-courses. To finish up, you wanna take an even darker pink or peach and place just a few more dots at the center of some of the flowers and that is it. So that's our little letter all done. This would make such a sweet birthday card. You could get this done in sort of half an hour and do something really personal for a friend. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I can't wait to read your comments. If you are a synesthet, please comment and say, what type of synesthet are you? Are you experiencing sounds in color? Do you hear or experience um, feelings when you eat food? I don't know, there's all kinds of like different ones. And if you just realized that this is you, please comment. I'm sure we all wanna hear. It's a pretty profound experience when you realize this for the first time. So yeah, we definitely wanna read in the comments. <laughs> um, thanks for hanging out. Definitely hit that subscribe button for lots more content like this and head over to my Patreon site if you'd like this week's bonus content. There's a coloring page there. There's bonus content every week. It's a great way to support the channel. It's only $2 a month or $22 for the year. You get a month free when you sign up for the year. 